And first of all, I should introduce the people that are not here all the time, but are here just today. And this is Heather on the left, and this is Tanya on the right, and they're both from Buckle, and they're both store managers for Buckle, and have been for a very long time. They know everything there is to know about customers that shop at Buckle. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Well, we're excited to be here and talk to you guys a little bit today, um, just kind of a little bit on marketing and consumer behavior and some of the stuff we do at Buckle that makes us successful business owners. So, a little bit about me, I'm Tanya. Um, I've been with the Buckle for six years. Um, I started with Buckle right when I graduated from college in 2010. Um, I went into our management training program, um, which was a program that allowed me um, about a year long training um, of experience from traveling with our CEO, president, and district managers. I have worked in four different states. Um, I got to go to our home office, which is in, um, if you are listening, I'll quiz you later, on Kearney, Nebraska. And we have candy, so we have candy later. So, um, so I went through that program to get my own store. So I have worked in the city stores, and now I actually work down here in Mankato. And I also do a lot with campuses. So. Um, in the Midwest, so a lot of class and presentations, um, a lot of campus events that are held um, on certain ones, so resume reviews, mock interviews, kind of all about helping students get ready for the real world, um, which is one of my favorite things that I get to do, so. And I'm Heather, I manage the Rochester Buckle. I am celebrating my 15 years with the Buckle. I've been managing for nine years in Rochester, and I managed one year in Madison, Wisconsin. And, um, the cool thing about the buckle is that you, once you get to a certain level of managing and you get things under your belt, you can do special things. So I'm also um, a district recruiter, so I help with campuses. I work with Monona, I've come over here, I've done some stuff in the cities, but I also help with other stores need recruiting in their stores and their current staffing needs. Um, it's like one of my favorite things to do where I go and help with um, a store just needs help in actually how to recruit for their own, own people. And um, yeah, and I'm super excited to get a chance to come and help with this campus, so. Awesome. So we just had to be fun just to get you guys' brains kind of stirring a little bit about just some buckle knowledge, a little bit about who we are so you can understand about some of the stuff we're going to go into and why we do the things that we do. So who has ever shot buckle here? Put your hand up. All right, all right. A couple of you guys. So do you guys, will, um, do you guys know when buckle started? What year do you guys think buckle started? Candy. Candy. <laughs> Shout out some numbers. What do you guys think? You can guess. 94. 94? Oh, geez, you're in the back. I'm so sorry if I... Cool, so you get candy for participation. And it's over there. So she's, a, she's a retail manager, not a football player, so... <laughs> I just didn't want to hear What did you have? Put your hand up. What did she try? 84. 84? Laura, but you still get candy. Way to participate. It actually started in 1948 as Mills Clothing Line we launched. Um, it was a men's suit shop. Which is kind of crazy to think about what, buckle, what buckle has evolved into. Um, in 1967, we transformed into brass buckle, which started getting into more of the men and women's side of clothing. So it's kind of crazy how far we've kind of come along the way. If you guys heard me earlier, where do you think what city did buckle start in? Carney, Nebraska. Carney, Nebraska. Woohoo! You like your candy over there. <laughs> yes, Carney, Nebraska. So if you guys have ever been out there, it is like the Willy Wonka of the town. Everybody and anybody who lives there pretty much works for Buckle. It is like runs the town over there. It's pretty exciting to see what Buckle has built in Carney, Nebraska, and where we've kind of come from there. Um, do you guys know um, about how many stores we have? What do you think Buckle has right now? 200. You're about half of where we're at right now. We have about 450 stores and growing. Um, we have recently launched into Alaska, which is pretty cool. We're reaching that market. We haven't gone to Hawaii yet, which I'm hoping one day we will, because I would love to go there. Um, but we just went into Alaska. Um, we're in about 44 states right now. So it's kind of cool, the expansion that we've grown into. Um, what makes Buckle unique is that 43% of our sales are denim. We are a denim destination store, and that is usually what Buckle is known for and what people go to. Um, so if you guys have ever shopped us for denim, you know the variety of denim fits, brands, and sizes that we carry. Um, we have zero long-term debt. 
and we don't open stores up in debt, which is kind of unique about our company. I know retail can be kind of a scary place, a scary word if you've seen some of the other retailers out there, but we are growing, we are expanding, and we don't have any um, long-term debt, which is pretty cool. Um, and we also have had the same president. Um, how long do you think our president has been with us? Do you think what presidents of a company? Yeah. How long do you think he's been with us? 28 years. 28 years? A little higher, what'd you say in the green? Uh, 33. 33 is still high. He's been with us for 50 years, our CEO. And that is longevity in a company. Our um, district manager has been with us for, she just celebrated, what was her, 30 years? Mm -hmm. 30th this year, or last year, so it'll be 31 years, which is pretty exciting, just the growth that we have and consistency in our people. Um, so awesome, just a little bit about Buffalo. This one, you guys get to know a little bit about our company and kind of who we are and what we do, so. So the next thing, we have more candy. <laughs> Can anybody tell me what the four P's of marketing is? Oh, 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 that, we have, oh, come on, That's you all right. have to three tips. Please, you guys love kids. Yeah. Product, price, promotion, and place. Awesome. Yeah. Nice Perfect. job. Yes. So you guys have learned about it, and it's definitely something that is applied into the world of marketing um, and business owners. It's, you definitely use it in the world, and that is something that we use a lot at Buckle. Um, we break down those four P's into different categories, and then there's different ways that we apply those things. So, um, so we're going to first talk about product. And then um, just kind of get a chance to get your guys' brains a little bit on product. How do you, um, if you guys own a buckle, how do you figure out what product to carry for your store? What would things, what would you look at if you're going to go, like if you're a dentist, you're a president, you're going into a new market, what would be some things you'd want to get a chance to look at? The consumers. Cons consumers, for consumers, sure. Yep. Yeah. What about the consumers would you want to find out? But let's say in this code, they like certain things that I heard don't like. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Who so, likes what in the area? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what your competitors are doing? Definitely. You got to look at your competitors. So we, as the president, he would go look and see what the other stores in the area are doing. So other retailers. For sure. And like for us specifically, we look at brands. So like... We're in the country, so you know, Mankato and Rochester, we have city, but we have a lot of country outside of us. And so the product we carry in our store is going to be different than if you would walk into the Chicago um, suburbs. Their locations are going to be a little different, so we'll give you a specific. So in our locations, we're like number one in our relaxed fit jean. Okay, but if you go into Chicago, the slim fit is probably their number one fit <clears throat> in their location because they're a little bit trendier than the guys in our location. So we're gonna carry different product and wanna get a chance to um, represent different product in each location. Definitely. So with a lot of, uh, with product, when you're building a company or you're working for, you open your own boutique store, um, thinking a little bit about brands um, and private labels are kind of what sets us apart with Buckle. So guys, if you've probably seen on the girls all those sparkly jeans out there, the Miss Me denim, um, yes, some other retailers do carry it, but what's awesome with our buyers is we work directly with the vendors to create specific pocket details, specific lengths that is going to set us apart in our niche from other retailers. So um, Shields carries Miss Me's, but they don't carry Miss Me in short, long, extra long, and extra, extra long inseams. They just carry regular length denim. So that's how we set ourselves apart is we work directly with the vendors and to create those specific pocket details or specific lengths. Um, that's going to help us in our market. And even the quality of the denim, we <clears throat> use a different percentage of cotton, different percentage of stretch, that's more premium um, product in that too. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing that's kind of cool is that, I don't know if we emphasized it when I went over, the reason why I do, uh, why I love being a manager of the buckle is that I'm a business owner. I make a percentage off my store. I get a salary and then I get a percentage. And in that, I get to make a lot of decisions. And so we were talking about different locations needing certain things. So I get to say, so Dry Goods opened next door to us a, a year ago. And they carry a certain brand called Flying Monkey. And I had no Flying Monkeys in my store. And so what I did is I got on the phone and I said, I need these tomorrow because my competitor next door has them. And people are asking if I have them. 
And so that's something kind of cool is as managers is we get to look at what product are we missing. Like when they put shields in our mall, Oakley, we were like, oh my gosh, we got to get on the phone and get Oakley in our stores because the Oakley is going crazy at those other stores. And then the same thing, we look at rankings. Everything in our store, we're ranked in our store. So jeans, I'm ranked 30 in the company and guys BKE. And so she might be rated 20 in the company. And based off our rankings is how much we get of that product or the newness or the majority of that product is based on how much you sell that product in your store. So when you're a business owner, we're just not selling clothes all day long. There's a lot of background stuff that you have to do to understand your market and your consumer and what does the consumer need? What does the consumer want? So if you came into our store and you're like, gosh, I'm just not finding my size. I really need this size. We will contact the vendor and say, hey, our guests in this area are really needing this size. Can you send us this size? Um, we're not able to, you know, support them in this size and they will send it to us. Um, we also, so we created up with a thing called Performance Tracker, what Heather was talking about, where we can actually track, see our ranking, see how much units we have sold, see the dollar amount of units we have sold, um, and that allows us to either, if we need to grow it, is it in the right place, which we'll talk about a little bit, is the product in the right place, you have the right people supporting that product, so a lot of the decisions, it's more than just selling clothes, there's a lot that we think about to be able to cater to this market. So, And then to support our product, we have a ton of services. <clears throat> so we call and email guests to come in. So these are all services that you won't find anywhere else in the mall. We give free alterations, which is like $20 service we get for free. We give every dollar you spend, you get certain points, certain points you get dollars off. So we give a lot of services. We set up fit appointments. So these are all things we give go above and beyond specialty level service besides our product that gets guests to come to us versus like next door. Mm -hmm. Because these are things that when you are a business owner, you're in a marketing position, you got to think about what does the consumer want, what are the consumer's needs in a company. So we realize if we're going to make our shopping place, our store, one-stop shop where we can cater all the way from youth clothing um, and little girls' sizes and boys' sizes all the way up to um, a men's size, 46, extra, extra long, how do we get everyone into our store and what does the consumer need when they're shopping us? So um, offering some of those services allows the guests to realize that, oh, Buckle has this, Buckle allows me to do this, Buckle will hem my jeans for free, um, I get rewards points, they will gift wrap for free. It kind of adds in the uniqueness about what makes Buckle special um, and sets us apart again from the other retailers. So the next part is we talked about product. So now is price. So how does price affect consumer behavior? If it's too expensive, we won't buy it. Totally. Yep. The, definitely. I mean, the guests want, if it is too expensive, they, what, what do you need to know? If something is really expensive, what do you want to get out of that product? So what do you look for if the price is really high? Quality. Quality, for sure. Definitely. What else are you looking at? Brand. What? Brand. Brand, totally. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at Buckle, price equals quality. So if you're looking at a brand, if something is, denim is $148, you're looking at the quality of the denim. You're going to wonder how long your denim is going to last. Is it going to make it through the wash cycle? Can I wear this multiple occasions? Is this brand represent a high price point brand and quality? So, um, and I think with that too, <clears throat> we talked about in my leader meeting this morning is that um, with our other price points, we want to make sure that that guest that comes in for the high price point knows that we have the lower price point. Because if I don't show that person that we have something other than the $152 jean, then they're going to go when they don't want to spend that money or don't have that money, they're going to go to my competitors. So we really make sure we teach our um, employees and make sure that we visually merchandise that the guests can see all different price points through sale denim or lower price point and, and get a chance to share the value of that as well. Definitely, because in the market, the consumer decides is the price a pro or a con for me to buy this item. So if you look at something and it's not representing what you feel like in a price, your decision as a consumer is going to be like, not want that price. Well, we need to make sure that that guest understands what they're going to get out of that price. So that's one thing that Buckle, why our customer service um, is to create the most enjoyable shopping experience possible for our guests. Well, we have so many different brands and price points that we need to make sure you guys as the consumer understand what you're getting out of that brand. Do you really understand what this brand is about and is it going to represent you the best? And is it, are you going to get what you said, the quality out of it that you're really looking for? So. And then another cool thing that we do <clears throat> is a lot of people always like to ask me, well, I don't see a lot of sale at the buckle. You know, like you guys see it like right after Christmas, the whole store goes on sale. 
Well, the reason why we do have sale, but the reason our whole store doesn't go on sale is that when week by week, when we don't sell a certain SKU, they look at another store and they go, wow, that store is ranked number two in the company and this store is ranked number 400 in the company. We're going to take what they have and send it to number two. So we rotate the, the products to our company and so that way it gets sold and so things go on sale because they're not selling. <clears throat> and so that's why we don't have as many markdowns because we get it sold, we get it out, we get it to other stores that are selling it well. And that's something I don't think any other retailer in the mall does. That's something our president started when he first started out with the buckle. And it's something that's been a tribute to our success, mm -hmm. and especially through our sell through of our product. Definitely. And that's one thing, if you guys go out and own your own business, or you guys start your own business, or you guys go and market for a company, really understanding um, like the markdowns in your store and the product and the, the price in your stores. Um, so the polls that we do is really beneficial to us is we don't have tons of stuff in our store sitting there for five years, year round, just sitting in the back room, losing value, decreasing, getting to 75% off. Do you think you make money when things are 75% off? Not at all. Make no money. Make, you probably make no money or at cost or it costs you have money because all the time it's spent taking it, putting it on the floor and taking it off the floor. You're probably more money. losing money by having people be out, placing that product back and forth into the store. So when things really get 50% off in a store, there's really no value that the store is getting out of that. So that's why we really try to make sure that each store, like if Heather sold this thing better than I did and the company saw that, they will pull it from my store and ship it to her. If I was selling those shoes better, they will take those shoes from her and send them to my store. So we rotate that product a lot faster than other stores so we don't have it just sitting there being stagnant in, a, in, a, in the company or in the back room or just um, collecting dust that some places do. So that's one thing that's really unique about it and that's what I really love is just that product rotation that we have is a little bit faster than other stores. So, um, so the next one, so we did product, price, where do you think we're going next? Promotion. Promotion, for sure. So what, do, what, what does promotion mean to you guys? When you guys talked about promotion, what do you think promotion means as a marketing and for consumers? Yeah, what do you got back there? Growing your brand. Brands? Growing brands. Growing brands, definitely, yeah. I'll give you two because that's actually right on the dot on what we're going to say. And I'm getting really close to that camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's it's brands. What motivates a guest to buy a brand? So, um, you know, the great customer service that we have, like I talked about earlier, is you can't do business if you don't have the right people with you. You can't grow a brand if you don't have support on that brand. Do you have information about that brand? What do you know about that denim? How's it going to stretch? How's it going to wash? You know, do you have all the information that you need to to be successful, or are you just hoping that it's going to sell when that guest walks in and they like the way it looks? You have to have support behind a product. You have to have support behind the price. You have to have support support behind the promotion in order for that product to go out of your door. So, and just like I just give you guys like a real life thing, we just had our spring brand event in our store, and basically it was is a couple different things If the guests tried on they got a little pull tab and they can win like five ten or twenty dollars off if they spent a certain amount of money in the brands that they tried on they got a free bag and um why do you guys think that we did that why did we choose like our president was like okay spring we're going to launch a spring brand event why would they do that it's a new thing to get consumers to go to the store mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, and, and uh, our company is really saturated in the Midwest and the cold states, and so are people coming out to look for shorts right now? Unless they're going on vacation. No, and so like the product that's on our floor really isn't reflective to the weather that we have right now, and so we gotta get people excited to try it on. And so it A, helps us introduce products to guests that maybe never worn our stuff before and encourages them to do it through our different promotions. But also for our, our, our guests that shop us all the time, it's a reward for them because they're already coming in for those brands and they're already spending the money and then they get the free bag. I mean, we have guests, we've done this for years and it's so funny, they always ask me, when's the bag promotion coming out? I mean, the bags are like $12, but they love those free bags. Mm -hmm. And then the last part is our um, employees get behind the product because to show that product, to talk about the promotion, they gotta get excited about bringing those brands and they gotta expand their knowledge, 
their personal bias on product um, to fit the promotion and get that brand out. So, cool. So, how do you think a consumer decides to go shop somewhere? How do, how do you decide to go into a store? What do you, what does a consumer do? Yeah. You like the products they carry. You like the product? Yeah. You know a little bit about the brands that they carry, so you're going to go in there and check them out. What else does a consumer go into a place to shop? Yeah. Need for it. Need for it, totally. Definitely. The display outside the store. Yeah. The windows, anything on the outside of the store is a drive-by. Definitely. Anyone else have any other ideas? <laughs> They've been in the store already? Yeah, they've shopped this before, definitely. They're going to come back. So, a little bit about Buckle, if you guys have, if you know about us. We have, really have no paid advertising. So that's, I mean, you've never probably seen us on TV. You've probably never heard us on the radio. We're never in the magazine unless maybe a celebrity is wearing it and we are selling that product as well. But what we really do as a company is we really search out what helps us keep our costs down is for the promotional side of things is we look for the free things in advertising. Um, so what would be some great advertising? What's out there right now on social media that you see a lot of? That's free. You don't have to pay That's anything. free. You don't have to pay anything to advertise on. Yeah. Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 100%. Yeah. Instagram, I mean that's a huge success for us. Each store has their own Instagram account um, set up for them for shoppers to follow the product on. So we will post promotions that we're having, we will post new product that we get in, because we get product in every day. Every day we get something new. Um, so we will post all the newness that we're getting for that guest to see, um, which is really exciting for them. They can call us, let us know they saw it, and we will put it on hold for them or they will we'll pay for it over the phone. Um, so Instagram, what else is out there do you think that's used a lot of? Facebook. Facebook, yeah, definitely. You guys all have Facebook. I know you guys have every one of these on your phones. Yeah, Facebook. Everyone has Facebook. And how much do you see? Yeah. Twitter. Twitter, for Twitter. sure. Yeah. Snapchat. Snapchat. Tumblr. Tumblr. Oh my so, gosh, yeah. So we have to tell you guys our outline said YouTube. <laughs> We're like, this is how long we've been doing it. When YouTube, like, we just started launching into social media, and that's when YouTube was really big. Yeah, like YouTube. That was our first launch was into YouTube, and I don't know if I've ever posted a video into YouTube anymore. No. Yeah. But we look for those quick things. So as us as a business owner, we gotta keep up. We gotta keep up. Yeah. So every day I'm like talk to this like people who go to school, and I'm like, okay, what's the new thing? What are you guys doing? I need to know about it because the if, filters and, yeah. the, and the hashtags. I seriously didn't know a hashtag until last year like really what that <laughs> yeah. meant and now we got a hashtag I hashtag all day we post like three times a day we post in the morning so when people they first look at their phone they see our feed then at lunchtime we do it another one because when you guys go on break or whatever or you don't do it in class I know you don't do it in class and then when you go home at night and you have dinner you get a chance to look at that feed so I mean this is something that's new for us but it's something we have to stay ahead of because a lot of retailers are using this and it's crazy like we posted something the other day and within one minute another store in another state called us for the skew of that jean because their guests wanted to buy it and it was like less than two minutes of making that post it was crazy yeah so I mean social media I mean just staying with the times as a business owner and reaching out to a new consumer in a new market how do you think we reach out to the people who grew up on cell phones and social media and I mean there wasn't any of that really it wasn't big even when I was in college it really hadn't launched fully and that was a, year, a couple years ago so don't count how long ago but so if you aren't staying with the head of the times are you going to be able to move forward with new ideas and new brands and reaching new consumers to come shop you it's going to be a lot harder and you're going to have to pay a lot more to get people to come experience you but if you're reaching out um, on those different aspects of things so we use our teammates a lot um, a lot of people um, are connected in different ways than you would think so our teammates post on their Facebook um, and it's not something we tell them to do it's our teammates are super excited about our product they're passionate about it so if you have passionate people working for you you're going to be successful so using the right people to post the right things um, but yeah I mean I just think that social media right now with and staying ahead of the game and being able to use free things to reach out to people. How awesome is that? To be able to grow a market and grow a consumer by someone seeing an Instagram post. Yeah. That's how I do social media, that's it. Yeah, we don't do any advertising. Yep, and we're a one, we just hit a billion dollars a year ago, so, or two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, as a, we're in the Forbes business, um, we just hit a billion dollars by zero advertising. And it's through, like, our, it's, it is through that, but our main thing, what it started with is our word of mouth. So, like, 
you come in the store today, I help you, I get to know you, I get to know your name, I show you products, I make a connection with you, and then you go and tell your friends how awesome it was, or they like the jeans that you're wearing, and then they bring somebody in. So it's through our people that help and through the product. Now this Instagram just takes that to a whole nother level, so we hire the right person that, like in my community, I hire someone that knows everybody. So if they know everybody, when they walk through the door, they know that when they walk through the door, they help them, but then also through their social media, they're bringing those people in too. Yeah, so that's kind of cool, just the word of mouth business. So that's why if you guys have ever shopped a buckle, or the, if you don't really know about a buckle, and you just maybe kind of hear a little bit about it, why, um, the salespeople there, why we would get to know you and why we say hi to you when you walk in. It's because we're really passionate about what we do and we're really passionate about our product and getting to know our people. So if that's kind of what the difference is and why we, um, with our mission statement, um, just what we believe in at Buckle is just giving you that great customer service and a great experience where you just always want to come back and shop because I know your name. It's like Cheers. If you're, I don't know. Anyone ever watch those reruns of Cheers where everybody knows your name? I mean, I like to think a little bit about I mean, that. I don't, you don't even know what Cheers is. <laughs> well, it's pretty cool. So, I mean. <laughs> it's a great job. Right? Oh, she, she, right? She, okay. Oh, no, right? Awesome. So, I mean, we know your name when you come in. We'll continue to know your name. When you come in, you don't even have to tell us. You just say the event, and we will pull you proud because we know you so well. We know what you like. So we're gonna know those things about you. You call us ahead of time and you're like, Tanya, I have an event this weekend. I'm coming in Saturday. Uh, I'm going up to the cities for a concert. Can you find me some outfits? Cool, I will send you some pictures of outfits. I will have a room set up when you come in. I will treat you special when you come and shop us. So that's what we like to do at Buckle. But if you think about the over 100 different brands that we carry, and if you walk in, if I don't say hi to you and I don't help you, do you think you're gonna find the right fit or the right style of shirt that you're looking for? Probably hit or miss, you know, you could just grab a right pair of jeans and it could be the right fit, but with going from a slim fit to a curvy fit denim, if you're a slim fit person, you try curvy fit on in a mid-rise or a high-rise, are you going to like it? No, you're going to think that's all Buckle has. If you're a curvy fit person and you try on a slim fit low-rise, super low-rise, are you going to think that's all we carry? Probably. You're going to experience the wrong type of experience there, so we just want to make sure at Buckle um, with like promotion and stuff that you guys get to experience the right thing that you want to experience when you're in the store and not experience something that is the wrong fit for you. So. Okay, sure, I'll go to the next one. Okay, so the next one, the last one is place. <clears throat> is that we just wanted to talk a little bit about just like we kind of touched base with it, but just so you guys know that um, we do all of our products sent out through Carnegie, Nebraska, and it's sent up to support up to 600 stores, and it's gone through FedEx. But the one cool thing about us is we kind of touch base is that we get freight Monday through Friday, so we get new stuff every day. Um, I mean, I do shop other stores. I am a little kid, so I shop at Gap. So on Tuesdays, if you have a Gap card, you get an extra 10% on that day. So a lot of stores do that where they'll give, I know Kohl's I see all the time where they do their Black Friday Saturdays like all year round and that's what gets the guests to come shop those certain days. But what the buckle does is we say, hey, Monday through Friday, we get brand new stuff in. And so that way it gives that guest a reason to come back again and again. So if you love the product today and I let the guests know we have more in, sometimes they come the next day because they're just so excited to get a chance to see what we've got in. And that's what brings the guests in frequently with us is that they know that there's always going to be something new on our tables. And we also only get certain sizes in. So we'll get the small to the extra large. <clears throat> and then we it's based off of what we sell through. And sometimes we'll sell out. We may not get it back in. And so the guests just really have that understanding that i got to buy now because this may or may not be here when I come back again. Mm -hmm. Cool. So with um, placement, so obviously your placement has to go is um, your visual merchandising plays a huge part in placement in a store. So um, we have no floor sets, we have no planograms. So what that's pretty cool is that we really want to make sure that our visual merchandising is done by our sales team. It really allows us to get a hands-on feel for that product, we get to experience that product, um, we really get to understand what that brand is all about, and we that helps us be able to show it to our guests, talk about that brand or product to our guests. So. Um, we obviously are split into a girl side and a guy side for convenience of shopping and our store is set up from slimmest fits in the front to more curvy fit 
pleats for girls or loose fits for guys towards the back half of our store. And that really just helps us place the product in the right place. It allows it for convenience for guest shopping. I don't want to be in up front and I have to go to the back and then I'm in the middle, I'm everywhere for denim trying to find it and our team is confused and no one knows where it is. Really make sure it's set up for convenience for both the shopper to self shop and for the team to be able to um, show it to our guests. Um, we also use, um, there is standards, because because we don't have planograms or anything like that, there's standards. We work with each other a lot. Um, we get the team involved a lot on their thoughts on the product, where it should be placed, where should we test it for a week. Someone's like, I just think it'd be really great here. Okay, we'll ask some questions. Why do you think it'd be great there? What would the guest or the consumer love about that being there? Would that draw somebody in to come shop us? Um, we also launched, we have videos on our intranet. Um, we launch walkthrough videos. So we'll walk through the store. Our CEO and our VP of our company are actually involved in these videos. Um, and they let us know what brands are really working well. Um, what are we really loving about this product? What is going to be some new launches? Just some general ideas on where products should be placed. So that allows you um, to kind of think about where you want things. You get to make the general consensus where you want it. Uh, but we do have support for you if you're not great at visuals to understand about how building brands and placement really affects the consumer coming in to shop you. Because if you put um, a BKE brand on your front table and it's been there for a while and you see the denim isn't moving and it's just kind of sitting there and then you're pulling it to another store. Once you start pulling product, that should be a clue like, hey, you let it sit there for too long and you didn't recognize the sell through on it and you just let that product kind of it's stagnant, no one was really excited about it, it wasn't visually appealing to the guests when they come in, your team wasn't supporting that product. So once you get to a poll and you recognize that that thing's getting pulled, next time, I always think about product, you're looking at that performance tracker, what are your, ranking, um, what are your rankings in that? Is it in the right spot in the store? If we move it up a table, let's sell better. Where's your hot spots in the store? So what, would, what do you guys think would be a hot spot in a store? Where would be great product placement in a store for a guest? Depends on, Depends on the product, totally. So if I guess, so you said windows earlier, so windows. Here, anything in the front of your store is gonna be a great spot just for that guest to walk by. So we make sure every brand is represented in the window. Yep. Um, so making sure all brand representations, the guest can usually get a little bit of something out of it. Anywhere around the register area. Why do you think the register area would be a great area for a guest? You guys probably do it all the time when, when you, you go, go out and shop or grocery shop. Or you go to like, Target. You have a child and they like, you already decided to buy, so you might just buy throw something else on the pocket. Yeah, yeah you're going to stand there and wait and maybe dig around in the basket a little bit and add a couple more things or see something around the register for sure. Um, and then fitting room, right outside of the fitting room. Because what is the guest, what are you guys probably doing when the consumer comes in, you're shopping, you're trying on clothes? probably coming out of the fitting room, looking in the mirror at yourself. Oh, you're like, oh, I like the shirt on this table. So right by the fitting rooms is a great product placement for a guest to build a brand. That's where we place a lot of our new brands, is right outside the fitting room for that guest to really get a chance to shop and feel that brand, so. And it's also based off of season. Like right now, again, we said it's, it's cold outside, but what do you think is on our front walls right now? Probably bathing suits. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So the, the new seasons are represented in the front part of the store and then the season that we've had so far is at the back side. So then when we hit July, what do you think is going to be on our front walls? All your fall stuff. Sweaters and jeans and, and all that um, summer stuff makes its way to the back part of the store. Yeah, we think that we got to think of a store in, in product placement um, and placement in marketing is like your fruits and vegetables. So we like to think of it as like bananas. So when things start, you think of a banana when it starts browning and all of that, you think of like product, rotating product around like that, you don't want it to brown too long or anything like that. And then, then it gets pulled or it goes on sale and it's sitting in the back of your room right now. So that product rotation and that placement is so key to push out those brands right now because Buckle, we are six months ahead of the trend is when our buyers are going to the market. So we are planning right now, our buyers are out planning for our fall launch. We've been buying our spring line since last October. We've been looking at the trends. So looking, um, it's called the zeitgeist. So looking ahead of the trends, how do you plan for it? How do you buy the product ahead of time? Because we can't be buying product now. We need to have be at our highest inventory right now to have that new spring trend for those guests to see. Because if another retailer has launched it a month ago and we just got it, do you think we're gonna sell it? 
Probably not. The guess is the consumer has already outbought that product. So always being ahead of the curve and buying product ahead of the time. So our they go out to the Vegas Magic Trade Show. Um, and they work with vendors directly. They go to private runway shows. They get actually experience, design the product right there in the market with the, the um, vendors and see what the new best thing is coming out. And we try to make sure we're a part of that. So that's kind of cool is our CEO goes to New York and Vegas um, to buy the top trends. I think so, he goes to Japan too. Yes, so. and he does sometimes go to Japan. So then the other thing is our soil location. We've touched basically on this, so this definitely if you're paying attention. So why um, why is each store run differently from different locations? Like why do we pick different locations that, that we do? Demographics. Demographics, yep. So you're does anybody kind of put a guess to what demographic we've kind of started with? So like if we started in the Midwest and we have a buckle in Rochester, Mankato, Minneapolis, Duluth, St. Cloud, what's else in that? What are what's the common denominator to all those towns? Across. A lot of out shoppers. A lot of what? Out shoppers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, demographic of like young twenty some college age. College. Yep. Yeah. So like, I mean, we do cater to all ages, but I mean, if you look at most of our bigger towns, um, they're basically started because of the <coughs> campuses in the area. Cause that was our first demographic that we were, sorry. I'm terrible <laughs> at the back row, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and so we are gonna pick different locations and then also look at um, when we go into towns, we talked about other places. Um, we also look just even the spot in the mall. Why is the spot in the mall like bidding wars? Like right now, Rochester, we just got we just got Shields, we just got H and M, and they bought out spots, and there's all these bidding wars, and it's like a lot of the motions going on in my mall right now. Why is the spot in the mall so important? Because different areas in the mall have more traffic. Yeah, and also too, like so for instance, um, uh, shoe place. What's the shoe place? Uh, oh. Nope. The Payless. So Payless has a temp spot across the way from me and everyone in my line is kind of high-end retail. We have Dry Goods, we have Victoria's Secret, we have Macy's, you mean we got like the top stuff in our home and they got Payless across us on a temp spot and I had talked to her today, she said they're down in business because their clientele is not shopping that line, that hallway and so she's waiting for her regular spot on the other side of the mall and so but for us for buckle we want I, most buckles are usually going to be down the same line as Macy's they're going to be in the same location as some of those key guests that shop similar stores like Victoria's Secret and us like we're always friends we always want to be in the same hallway if I was manager and my buckle was not in the Victoria's Secret hallway when we got remodeled that's where I would want to be because those guests shop our store they like that customer service they're going to like our customer service mm -hmm. and we're going to spend a lot of rent <clears throat> on those prime areas um, and then just even our lighting in our store like we changed like we both have been remodeled and it's gone to a lot lighter a lot brighter and it's crazy when we've done remodels I know when you guys had a remodel Mankato has killed business just by the their store did you get a new spot too was that a yeah, spot we went in the high traffic area right across from Vicky's Victoria's yep. Secret yep. <laughs> so we went across from Victoria's Secret remodel new lighting up huge in business so it's crazy how just those the location of the store and then the visual of just like the actual remodel of the store usually when they have remodels they give the store a good they want them to be up eight ten to eight to ten percent up because of the remodel mm -hmm. awesome so um, definitely I mean everything that you guys have kind of talked about with the four P's um, product price place and promotion definitely play a huge factor in if you go and into a market, if you're gonna go into marketing. Um, so I was thinking about how can you use those four things. I learned them in school, you guys are learning them in school, and it's definitely applied into the workforce, um, into any kind of a company. You always are thinking about those things, and the main goal is to be growing business. You always wanna be growing business. So thinking like a business owner is what we are. So when we own our own business and make that, percent, that net profit of our store, we need to make sure that we're doing everything right to obtain a new consumer. If we aren't growing business, if we don't have the foot traffic, then something has got to change. We can't keep doing the same thing year after year, the same. If 
we had a planogram, using the planogram, using the same ideas, but our CEO and them really allow us, um, our home office is just a support center for us. We really get to use our creative minds and growing our own business. So always just kind of thinking about, is this in the right spot? Do I have this as the right price point? When I'm, if you go buy for a company, is this the right price point for a company? Um, is our consumer going to like this? What do we know about this product? So kind of always time thinking of those four things as a business owner um, play a huge part in being successful in a business. So, And we use the four P's. It's not something we think about and then we're like, okay, we thought about this. We This is something we do in a, a quarterly plan, a year plan. We take the whole year and we take these four P concepts and we figure out you know, how it's going to be different. And why would in retail different seasons or different quarters need a different 4P plan? What do you think are two major seasons for us in retail? Summer and winter. Summer and winter? Yeah. What's in winter? What's like the big retail thing that... With Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> Holiday shopping. So my business plan for Christmas is way different than my plan for back to school. And so, you know, it, we take all those different areas, our product, where it's placed, what, where it's displayed. Like right now, spring product's so light and, you know, it looks a lot, not bare, but you kind of have to make the space look bigger because it's, it's not a heavy bulk. Not, like this doesn't take up much of the table. But when I get into winter, you know, the denim, the heavy shirts, and then it comes to just like our advertisements, so the Instagram, um, we'll be posting like when we get new back to school denim, but then for Christmas, we're not selling to actually you. Who are we trying to sell to? Parents. Your parents, yeah. So we're trying to like get your parent, you to tell your parents to come into our store. So um, our, our plans change every month and every season, and so those four P's do just differently <coughs> to the demands of that year and demands of our business. Yeah, like I said, you can't do the same thing in back to school and hope it works in holiday. And you can't do the same thing during holiday and expect it work going into spring break. So you always have to be thinking as um, when you're in the marketing kind of business is, is where, how are you going to make the biggest difference for your company? So doing the same thing year after year, are you going to get the same results? No. So really using um, the right people. So if you don't have the right people working for you, um, I don't know if you guys have done a lot with um, personality types and making sure that you have a variety of people. Do you have some sharks on your team? And by sharks, I mean people who are go-getters, eager, they're hungry. Um, they want to help the people. They're there for the money. They want to make money. Do you have people that are hippos, you know? They're just kind of... We have a book that gives you different animals. <laughs> yeah! And different personalities. So if we ever get to do another presentation, we'll bring out the, yeah, the so, hippos and the sharks and the, and yeah. the retrievers. Yeah! So I mean, it's kind of cool. You think about people as using different personalities so do you have these laid back people do you have people the hippo the hippo, the hippo is just, laid back yeah the hippo is just they love like to have a good time but they're just kind of there as a body on the floor so if you have all sh you know go getters i want to call them sharks because that's what i'm used to if you have all go getters on your team do you think you're going to have a good balance on your team what do you think it's going to do for business if you have all laid back people what is that going to do for your business so it's always good to hire a variety of people a variety of ages a variety of mixes because if you don't have the right people with you you can't do the business that you're hoping to do and the consumer that comes and shops you isn't going to probably like your store because they don't have a person there that's going to you know be on the same level as them understand their needs understand their wants um, they're gonna get the wrong misconception about the person so and then with that is so we have our planning and then our people and the last would be performance is that we got to make sure that if we hire the right people that they're performing at a certain level that's why we work off of commissioners because we want to make sure that the employee is getting the credit for really going above and beyond and the guest is getting that great experience um, and so at every level, we're, we're definitely at a performance level. We are definitely about numbers. We're about like what results you're getting, what actions are you doing. Um, but I think, if you guys play sports, I'm a competitive person, and so it's it's super fun to like look at, okay, we want to be better in shoes, so we got to sell 10 shoes to be number one in the company today. Like That kind of stuff is something that we're all, we, we take it to our personal sales, to the sales of the product, through the visuals of things. So mm -hmm. definitely performance is just a fun thing that we get a chance to do to review and motivate our people to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. You just can't come in and be like, all right, well, I hope we're going to hit day today. <laughs> hope some people come in and shop us today. No, you have to have a mindset. You have to have 
what is our goals? What are we gonna do today? What's gonna be different than yesterday? How is our mindset gonna be different than yesterday? What is our goals? How are they different than yesterday? So always just the performance side of things and then we reward people. So there is bonuses for people. The manager gets a bonus um, at the end of the year based how you know your increase in sales. So you always wanna be doing good. I would say right now most managers are right around, I mean, I would say anywhere from 80 to 100,000 is what our managers make in our buckle. So it's kind of cool as a word of mouth business that the type of business that we can do to increase our side of sales is by word of mouth and that's the kind of the percentage that our, some of our store managers are making. So it's kind of cool to look at the whole aspect, how it all kind of ties into the four P's of being successful in business. So, so we, we, um, we'll talk about quickly about our like what options we have, but we'd love to give a little bit of time to questions, comments, just curious, you guys are obviously a retail storefront, but do you guys have online sales that you participate Yeah, that's in? huge. Um, our online um, <clears throat> is a, hu a huge part of our business and its growth. Um, so we encourage, because if guests order online, they, if they have to return it, most likely they don't send it back so they come into the store, so that's more traffic in our store. If they like the product in our store, then they can go online and definitely do that. So yes, I don't know what the dollar amount at this point of what we do, but I know it's really high. For with the new day and age with things like how we're talking about all that social media, I mean online shopping, we've just seen a huge growth in that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why with some of our services, so with our buckle card, we offer free shipping mm -hmm. to our guests who are buckle block card holders. So that's some of the services that we do for them. So we offer those incentives. Um, to those online shoppers as well. So we make sure that we take care of them in our store as well. Yeah. Are your stores company owned or is it a franchise? Company owned. Yeah, company it's owned. just like a, what is it called? Like a, um, yes. So yeah, it's just that we don't have like stock hold. Then has any of the other company owned stores closed down last year or what's the, like the trending about that? Because I know. Mm -hmm. it, it can be, yeah, scary word. I know some of the um, places like Paxson, Hollister, some of those companies were closing their doors. You've heard about Walmart is closed, you know, Kohl's is closing some of their stores. But that's also too a little bit about what Buckle does is we really look for the right market, the right niche. We really investigate um, the right area where we're going to open that store. We're just not going to open into a mall because it's a mall. We really want to make sure that market is thriving, that market is growing. Who is in the demographic? What type of income is in that area? Who are the other retailers? How are they doing? So we really spend a lot of time investigating it. Um, I don't know the exact number. It, I don't think we had any I don't think last we had any year. closing last year. We actually opened, I think I know we opened 10 more last year. So we're, we opened a couple more stores. I think some of our original stores that we opened up, like in the really small community. Really, like, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I don't even know the name of the places, um, Hayes can't, I don't know, there's a store in Hayes, they they closed one a couple years ago, but that was one of the original stores, and it just wasn't a thriving market when they opened it, it didn't continue to be a thriving market, but we've continually opened about 8 to 10 stores every year. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, how do you go on about like researching like what your consumers want? Like, where do you get that information? That's a good one. Well, the thing is, is every day as managers, we're on the sales floor. So if I was helping you today and you were like, "Yeah, I really like this Oakley shirt. I like the um, they have that wick away sweat material on it. Like, man, I really like this. But do you have any other colors?" And I'm like, "I only got green." <laughs> So that's to me to say, I need to go call. So really it's our customer service, like what I do with the guests every day. The first question our president asks us when he travels is he asks us, what are the guests asking for or what are they saying? And so I always have my notes out because, I mean, it comes to like, hey, we want more of this or I like this, but we don't, you know, this didn't fit well. And like, we've even had product, we just, like we had salvages that used to kind of like tear apart because they had a lot of stretch in them. So then we just sent that in, told them, and then they fixed it for us. So I mean, it really comes down to our teammates and us on our everyday talking about the product with the guests. Mm -hmm. Also do our special orders. Like if we're special ordering a lot of short links in our store, then the company's like, gosh, there's a lot out there that are special ordering for short, so we probably need to be making more short links or extra long links or different ones. So that's a good question. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so 
I know you guys get new stuff every day. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain item, like for example, Levi's jeans has their 501 uh, yeah. series, or like mm -hmm. Lacoste has their US polo shirt, uh, polo shirts, and uh, mm -hmm. is there a certain item that stays in your store forever that customers come back to you and they like to just throw small colors of it? Yeah, I mean, we will always, our, the one thing that we will always get that we always have is our private BKE line um, that we always get in. Um, and that's something that we see a lot of our consumers liking and our guests liking because it's private owned and we carry those specialty lengths. Um, we cater to the, you know, people who need the extra short hem jeans all the way up to people who need the extra, extra long extended sizes. Um, so we see in the specialty, like the detail that goes into our washes, the stitch work that our um, buyers pick out. So just the exclusiveness that we have with that line is what makes it a little bit special. But every day, it depends on, sometimes we'll see heavier guy side come in or girl side come in, but we can look online up to three days out and see what we're getting in. Um, but we usually don't know what we're getting in a lot of what's the newness that we're getting up until about three days out or unless it's in our, that visual checklist that we talked about will tell us what's launching, what's coming, how heavy is it coming and how many are we getting of it. So that's one thing that we can kind of guess a little bit on. So. There isn't uh, like single clothing item that is just. Nope, it's like Christmas every day. <laughs> yeah, there's just, there's just a lot of Literally. everything just coming go, in. It's Christmas to me. We go back there and it's like, ooh, shoes. It's a surprise Jeez. usually of a brand. But, but we know in trend, I mean, like if we're in right now, I would say 85% is capris, shorts, tanks. I mean, we know the general because it's the season that we're in. You know, like I know I'm back to school in July. I will need to hire another freight person because the amount of denim that will be coming to my back room is insane. We'll get hundreds of jeans in July. Yeah, we usually just don't get one item continually. It's always a brand that we'll always have, but the brand will always change a little bit on detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So with Buckle, do you guys carry any like super limited product? Where yeah. We only have like very small quantities. Mm -hmm. A lot of brands nowadays that do it big have very limited quantities. It's more popular. Definitely, yeah. We do a lot of exclusive brands. Um, we've had a couple of new brands just launch. We will literally get one small, one extra small, one medium, one large, one extra large. And when that sells out, it's out. We don't get refilled in it. Um, it's just kind of an exclusive launch that this company is testing. Um, but like I said, we will probably, we get this in. Like we this will, sold out in my store. We, we might get refilled it. in it once, but it will never relaunch again in the company next year. It will always be something new. We will never carry 20 of these in our store. So that's what sets us apart too, is we buy small, but we buy exclusive. So that's why you usually never see the same person walking down the street in the same piece as you, is because we buy so exclusive. That's, that's what we really like to set our people apart, is to make you feel special about the product that you have and not know that 20 other people in this class own the exact same piece as you, the exact same color and the exact same style. So we're really looking for that special uniqueness about that product. So when you get a piece of product, know that you have, usually have an exclusive buy on that product or you'll get the one and only size and it usually never comes out again. So like one thing that's kind of cool too is we get brands like, <clears throat> we try to reach out like Freebirds or like Steve Madden makes them, that's our special line, they're like $300 pair of shoes. And like everyone in the company always wants some $300 price point, but like you have to sell them. I mean, you have to get your guests to special order them, and there's only a few out in the company. Um, I know like they got girl Oakley sunglasses. I'm gonna take them from her glass case before I go to my store. So it's just something kind of cool too that makes each location different. So when someone shops Mankato, they're gonna get a, some exclusive lines. Like she's got those and I got the Freebirds. So it's something, that's what's also kind of cool is that each location, if someone's traveling, they want to go check a new buckle out because they're going to have something different that their local buckle wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Cool, any other ones? Well, we'll just do a quick blurb on our, what we have and if there's any questions, unless you had any, anything nope. else you want us to elaborate on or go into. Okay, awesome. So just super quick, I don't know if you guys know about it, but one thing too that Buckle does is with working with campuses is we um, have a couple different opportunities um, for students to get to experience. So I don't know if you guys ever knew, um, I know we're on math jobs and all of that type of stuff, but we do do internships. So Buckle does offer paid internships where you get to come in and experience. And we do marketing internships, it's just not sales internships. So you get to actually come in and work alongside the manager as part of our management team. Um, and you get to experience anything that you feel like is important to you that you want to get out of it. So like the marketing side of things, um, anything in class that you really love to excel more into and get hands-on experience. So um, internships, so 
which is kind of cool. Not a lot of people knew that we offered those and they are paid, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. And then internship would turn into, if you wanted, is career manager and training, which is 12 months, and then as a manager, average pay is, well, starting pay is about 50,000. Mm -hmm. Base without, without bonus, so. Yeah, cool. Any questions on that, guys? Well, awesome. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to us. I hope you guys got something out of this and were able to hear a little bit about what you are learning in class is really what you will apply in the world, no matter what direction you guys try to take it um, in the job that you go out into the field. But just know that everything you guys are learning, and I wish someone would have told me 12 million times, really listen to what you guys are doing because I wish I could have gone back and been like, oh, but I did remember everything. You know, oh, I kind of remembered that. I kind of remember this. It does apply in the world. So. What you are learning right now is really going on out there. And we really wanted to give you guys those real life experiences as a business owner, um, marketing and reaching consumers and how do you grow a business. So thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see